I, yo, listen, I ain't gonna lie, okay? Hotel's release has been the dopest shit that I've ever experienced in Genshin Impact since Tartalia, okay? And I'm seeing a lot of opinions. I'm seeing a lot of people, okay? This, this is another controversial unit, but let's be real, dude. Uh, what else is new with this game's community? Another character that people are pissed off about, and hey, I get it, okay? To this day, Ganyu drives me nuts. I don't know, it's something in the water or, or maybe the 108 Fremo gems we got from the Genshin Impact event that this has people a little bit passionate about this game. Now, I'm seeing a lot of opinions some are fair, some are valid, but I'm gonna make this bald claim right now as, you know, <laughs> I often do. I think Hu Tao is the best character in the game, and I don't even think it's close, okay? I think Hu Tao puts Ganyu to shame, okay? One, because she's way cuter. <laughs> Two, because her damage is crazy, and three, she's way more fun for me to play. You may disagree, but I'm just saying, from my perspective, Hu Tao is now my favorite, and in my opinion, the best unit in the entire game. And I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, very easy to build, very flexible. Number two, very easy to equip, okay? Build, artifacts, equip, weapons, all that jazz. Crazy ease of use. And in my opinion, that should count for something, okay? Because you can literally run pretty much anything on this character, and they are absolutely ludicrous. From free to play weapons to pay to play weapons, it's pretty damn good, okay? The important thing is, is that Utao is incredibly flexible. And we're here to talk about all that shit right now. So if you got Utao, congrats. If you didn't, damn, that fucking sucks, bro. <laughs> But hey, if you're here just watching for what you may have missed, hey, leave me a sad face in the comments and I'll make sure to heart it. Okay, now listen, this is gonna be a very, very, very in-depth guide. Now, I could have posted this minutes after Hu Tao's release, but I actually wanted to take my time, make sure I knew everything that I was actually talking about, and also collaborate with a couple other content creators to kind of balance info, make sure everything's good before putting this out there. Because it's one thing to give you my opinion, and then it's one to get the consensus of many, many, many different people, find out what the most people agree upon, test those theorems. We take our time. We get in there real deep, and we also don't read that many Reddit or Discord articles because, I mean, those people put a lot of hard work into those, so rather y'all go support them themselves than me just read you off what Reddit says and take credit for their hard work. So, Hu Tao, okay? Hu Tao, a bad, bad, bad bitch. I, I swear to God, I have never experienced a, a more fun character than Hu Tao. Now, a lot of people are saying, ah, uh, Tectone, uh, she's not really that good until C1. Okay, first of all, I get your point. Let's talk about Constellation, because if this character's only good at higher Constellation, well then, for a lot of people, there's no fucking point to roll the character. Okay, now I will say this right now. Her C1 is very, very, very good. I mean, just look at this shit, dude. When her E is active, when her elemental scale is active, her charge attacks don't consume stamina. Now, that's who tells bread and butter. That's very good. She's charge attacking all the time. But does that mean that she can't take full advantage of her charge attacks without the C1? No, you just gotta not play like a dumbass. You have to be careful. And if you are careful, you're going to be rewarded with one of, if not the highest single target damage in the entire game, especially for ease of use. I mean, this and ease of build, it is ridiculous. Yes, it is very nice to see one to be able to dodge, run around, sprint all the time, and charge, 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 and play like an unga bunga ape. But no, if you wanna make Hu Tao work at C0, you can. You totally can. You just have to play a little bit more smart. You gotta play a little bit more careful. It's just like clay. Now, if you do want to play like an absolute chimp, then yeah, go for C1 if you like. But is it necessary? No, everything else is just a nice little damage boost. Nothing else is really required. The C6 enables a new build where you can just go zero crit rate and still get max damage. And that's really nice, but I'm gonna be real, dude. The amount of damage that she can pump out at C0 regardless is, it's ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous. Yes, uh, you'll be able to beat Spiral Abyss in like 30 seconds, but in reality, you have three minutes, so you'll beat it in like a minute. So does it really matter? No, does it make her way stronger? Yes, but that's the thing about Genshin Impact. Half the characters that are incredibly strong, they don't need to be that strong. They don't exist in a game where they need to be that strong. There's no content where you need Hu Tao to be that strong. So why bitch about it? It's fine. C-Zero on Hu Tao is amazing, and don't you forget that shit. Next up, we're gonna talk about artifacts. 
Okay, this one is very pog because there is a build that a lot of people recommend you to go. Um, it's going to be HP percent uh, on her sands, pyro damage on her cup, and then crit damage on her hat if you have her at C6. But if you have her at C0, I think you should go HP percent sands, pyro damage on her cup, and crit rate on her hat if you're having a hard time reaching the one to two golden ratio of crit rate to do damage. Yes, that's right. Every 1% crit rate, you should have 2% crit damage. It makes it incredibly balanced. You can go a little bit more, so go one to 2.5, but I believe in the golden ratio of one to two, if you can get that, but it's very hard. So have a little bit of leaning for yourself. But here's the thing. If you don't have an HP percent cup, it does not fucking matter. As you can tell right here, I completely shattered every single piece of content in the game with an attack percent cup, or sorry, an attack percent sand. I mean, like, look, 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 look. We can pretend that you have to build Hu Tao incredibly straight, but this character is broken, okay? You can put anything on her and it'll still be fine. So for your sands, if you want to use an attack percent, you want you don't want to build an HP percent cup, you can. I mean, you'll get a lot more benefit from the HP percent, but hey, it is what it is. Work with what you got. My recommendation, okay? If you are a C0 player, I think you should go an HP percent uh, sand, a pyro damage cup, and a crit rate hat if you're having a hard time to reach the golden ratio. Now to talk about preferred sets. Preferred sets, you can go so many different things. You can go four-piece Belide, you can go four-piece Lava Walker, you can go two-piece Crimson, two-piece Gladiator, you can go two-piece Crimson, two-piece Noble S, you can go four-piece Crimson. But in my humble opinion, the easiest set to build as a free-to-play C0 player is most likely going to be Crimson Witch and two-piece Noble S Oblige, okay? Or Crimson Witch, two-piece Gladiators. But if you can, it is highly advisable to go four piece Crimson Witch of Flames. But once again, this character does so much damage, it does not even matter. Yes, you will do more damage using a different build. Yes, you will. But that's damage that you literally don't need because once again, this character does infinite damage, okay? For stats to prioritize, it's the standard shit. It's the standard shit. Once again, it's a little bit different if you get Staff of Homa. But if you don't get Staff of Homa, don't worry. This is not a guide where I just talk about how good Staff of Homa is. Although Staff of Homa <laughs> is pretty damn good. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, your build. Um, 35k HP is great to have. Do you need it? No. You really don't. Will it give you a lot of benefit? Yes. But do you need it? No. This attack percent, crit rate percent, energy recharge. You can do that if you like. But Elemental Mastery is very, very, very good on her because we're talking about her team combo as well. Uh, attack percent is very good. Crit rate, crit damage, all that. Just, just, just typical, just typical damage dealer build is totally fine. If you get some extra HP percent in there, it'll be great. But do you need it? No, you can just build her like a typical damage dealer and this character will still be absolutely broken. You have a lot of options and I don't want to make this guide at all the same. Like this character is very hard to build and very hard to use. He's a easy breezy, very well designed unit and we're gonna get into that more later in the video weapons obviously staff of homa is her best weapon okay because it's fucking broken okay this weapon is beyond fucking broken do you need it no but if you have it cool this character has so many goddamn options it's ridiculous just to name a few, uh, okay, let's just talk about four stars. It's a five star spear. Five star spears are gonna be good on everybody, okay? You'll be fine. For four star spears, Lithic Spear, amazing. Dragon's Bane, amazing. If you use her with Xing Cho, which you should, because they're insane together. Dragon's Bane with Xing Cho is outrageous. And so is Lithic Spear with Xing Cho because he's a Luwei character. Favonius Lance is very, very, very good. It gives you more team play and synergy if that's what you like. Uh, Crescent Pike, I don't particularly recommend it. And by that, I mean, it's really bad. So I would not I would not use that on her. Um, another great spear. I'm gonna have to go pull it up that way I have visual reference. Prototype Star Glitter. Prototype Star Glitter is great for her, but it's, it's truly the use this if you absolutely have to weapon as a free to play. Yes, you could build this for Hu Tao and yes, it will work absolutely great. But if you have something else, if you got lucky on a banner, you are more than welcome to use it. Now, I wanna say this right now. 
uh, this findings of all the weapon comparisons and all that is. I did a bit on my own, but my buddy x who streams on Twitch, did an amazing job of breaking it all down, so I would be remiss to even pretend like I got all that information by myself, but x is a true homie. He's been a content creator who's been at my side for like nearly a year now. He's an amazing dude, and if you see x on Twitch, I would love for you to go check him out because he's a great dude, he's a smart player, he's a good player, and I love that dude so much. Next, let's talk about talent priority, okay? All of of these are very 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 important to do but in my opinion the least important to do is the ultimate and the most important one to do is the auto attack and also the e these two are very 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 important but i would prioritize the main attack in my experience i prefer the auto attack and the either very good to prioritize spirit soother is just fucking nuts it's very good but you don't need that many points into it uh because the energy recharge is pretty much who tells only problem and you're going to be attacking and using your e a lot more than doing constant alt spam because her energy recharge is pretty much the only downside to this entire character so another thing that's very worth mentioning is that you want to keep this character very 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 low because you notice when you press e uh, I had about 2,700 attack before I pressed E, and now afterwards I have 4,832 attack. Yes, that's also helped the staff of Homa. But the amount of sheer attack that this character has, if you can keep her low, is truly egregious. Um, running her with Xing Cho or Diona, or you could, or running her with Zhang Li for shield is very nice. Not gonna lie, the reason why I love this character so much is because playing her is like a constant teeter on like life and death, which is great because Oh my God, because she's a funeral parlor director. Oh my God, okay, it makes sense now. Okay, it makes sense. I love this character. You have to get her so low to do the most efficient plays. Do you need to do it? No, but like, that's like the whole premise of this video, dude, is that Hu Tao is a character that just has so goddamn much that once again, for the thousandth time, it does not matter what you do. It is impossible to fuck up playing this character. Now that we've talked about Hu Tao, I want to talk about who is the best to pair with Hu Tao. Now I'll say this right now. If you have a Xing Chao, you should use her with Hu Tao, and then you should use uh, the Dragon's, Dragon's Bane Spear, if memory serves me. Yes, Dragon's Bane uh, Spear, or just Dragon's Bane. Uh, it's gonna be really good. It's gonna give you a shit ton of elemental mastery, which is great, because you're gonna be vaporizing like fucking crazy. And also, look at this shit right here. Increases damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Pyro, which is very important because Xing Cho can slap on the Pyro, and then uh, Hu Tao can slap on the Pyro, and then they'll do crazy vaporized damage, and she'll just do a shit ton of damage. Uh, that's her bread and butter if you use her for Xing Cho. Other characters that she pairs well with is Tartalia. I mean, Tartalia, Hu Tao is a match made in heaven. Like, you will never experience a better team synergy than Hu Tao and Tartalia. It's insane. That, well, and albeit, uh, uh, Xing Chou. Uh, Gan Yu is also great with her, gives you the nice melt procs. Zhang Li is great with Hu Tao, uh, especially if you don't have him at C6. I mean, pretty much you can use this character with anybody. Uh, Bennett has a negative synergy because it'll heal Hu Tao up, and then you won't get the damage bonus, but like, even still, they're absolutely great together. It doesn't even matter. Mona Hu Tao is amazing. I mean, it's very hard. I mean, Beto Hu Tao is awesome. It's very hard to think of a character that's not good with Hu Tao. Oh, Chong Yun is amazing with Hu Tao. Uh, Zhang Ling is amazing with Hu Tao. Uh, I mean, it's just, it doesn't really matter who you put with her. But I would highly recommend for anybody who plays Hu Tao to at least pair them with Xing Cho one time and just see how incredibly ridiculous this character truly is. All right. Now, lastly, I ain't gonna expect y'all to take my word as gospel. I wanna show you that what I'm saying actually holds true. So I'm gonna use Hu Tao with a bunch of four stars in various scenarios, and y'all tell me what you think of the results, okay? We all dump everything. By the way, this team that I'm using slaps hard for Hu Tao, okay? I mean, this shit slaps hard. But as you can see, yeah, Hu Tao does a little bit of damage. And yeah, it's kinda cool. And lastly, I absolutely slapped Spiral Abyss, except for 11-2, because I'm being real, bro. Uh, I, I cannot be bothered to actually, <laughs> to actually bother with 11-2, man. It is, it is so annoying. It is just the worst thing ever, because it's not even a... 
And you have to protect the block, bro. You have to protect the Minecraft. It's so annoying. Regardless, I'm going to show you a damage test on 12-1 uh, real quick. But yeah, it's very important to me to show this team off with just four stars because I believe that every single person should have a Beto, a Fish, and a Shing Show belt to at least 70 on their account. Okay? These guys can go with anybody. They're so goddamn good, and I will, I will sing their praises to the moon. We're going to hold up. Come on, gather up. There's also Hu Tao at not, at not low HP. She'll do even more at low HP. We're gonna get away from the group up still. We could kill him faster, we could. Now we're gonna pop off real quick. We're gonna slap him. Press this shit, we're gonna beat the fuck out. We're gonna dump that. And we're gonna get, just keep dumping into him. And as you can see, they're gonna take a whole hell of a lot of damage. And then when, it's, when it falls off, you're going to swap to a different character. And this is the part that I don't get how people don't know how to do. And then you press this, you press this, you do this, and look at that, you're eating back up. Wow, it's like the downtime's actually a positive because now you'll actually know when you should swap off or when you should not. The character is incredibly well designed. Incredibly, incredibly well designed. And yes, having her at C1 will help a lot, it will. But as you can tell, for the duration where you swap off and use all of your abilities, you don't need to use stamina. You can use a little bit if you like, but you can iframe with your ultimate abilities over and over and over again to where you can let that stamina recharge the entire time. And by the time you swap back to Hu Tao, the stamina will be majorly filled regardless. So the character is very easy to use. He's incredibly fun to play. And once again, in my humble opinion, He's my favorite character, and I think she's the best character overall. But hey, we all have your opinions. If you still think Ganyu's the best, that's okay, but I truly feel that Hu Tao uh, dethroned her, and why am I okay with that? I don't know, but I love this character so much, I don't care! So yo, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're enjoying your Hu Tao. If you don't have Hu Tao, well then come to twitch.tv forward slash techtone, and you yourself may be walking away with one, but I won't get into that too much. Hope you all have a great day. Catch you in the next one. Peace.